This is Rafah. This is Rafah. This is this is Rafah. All these bombings around us on the front of our eyes and your eyes. Hey everyone, this is Bissam from Gaza. We're still alive. 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 We're still alive. I don't feel safe. Priorities changed from being alive to how to survive until tomorrow. I aim to uh, change the stereotype about my home country. My name is Bissan Oude. I'm from Gaza, uh, Palestine, and I work as you know, a part-time uh, content creator and filmmaker. I documented all the beauty of uh, Gaza Strip. And I was an activist, and still of course, but I was an activist in uh, the fields of uh, women and youth work. So, yeah, yeah, that's me. That's my life before 7th of October. <laughs> I have started making the videos, but not recording what is happening about the news. I'm not a news, I'm not a media. Of course, I'm telling the world about the crimes, how many people are killed, how many people are injured, what massacres are, uh, are committed. But I'm also focusing on telling these stories, the daily routine of the people, the new daily routine. Building the tents, suffering from starvation, and because there is no water, um, all these challenges that just came from nowhere. Remains of a rocket. Actually, for me, it's not the first bombing that I am living in Gaza. But after two days or three days, I discovered that no, this is not a normal bombing. It's not a normal uh, rockets, airstrikes, targeting some places in Gaza Strip. It's يعني, a genocide. It's demolishing and burning the whole neighborhoods, displacing hundreds of thousands of people together, uh, and then intentionally bombing the places that uh, the, the army told people to go to. We're evacuating now. We're leaving our home. אנחנו מטילים מצור מוחלט על העיר עזה. אין חשמל, אין מזון, אין מים, אין דלק. הכל סגור. אנחנו נלחמים בחיות אדם ואנחנו נוהגים בהתאם. At 6 a.m. today, at the morning, uh, and, and thousands of people, like all the people living in the northern and western side of Gaza Strip, uh, got a call from an Israeli number. It's a recorded call, and uh, the recording is telling us that we must leave our homes to the southern areas of uh, uh, Gaza Strip uh, because uh, they want Gaza empty and it will be destroyed. There are posts. It's like it's like paper posts, and these posts are now in the sky. Look at this paper. Today is 10 times worse than yesterday. 100 times worse than the first day. Gaza is collapsing. We have lost many things, but the most thing that, yeah, I need destroyed us was losing our grandmother. She used to tell us about uh, how it is, is this war similar to the 1948 war. This escalation she couldn't because she, she was displaced from her home, her comfort zone. Yani in the beginning, 30 days of this uh, genocide, the Shifa hospital was just a very crowded, unhealthy, scary place. Between 50 to 70,000 people were there in a medical complex and the only and the largest functioning hospital in the whole of north of Gaza Strip. She got weak, she got sick and she passed away. My grandmother. 
I think the hardest thing that I've been through in this uh, madness that we're living in was uh, leaving Gaza, leaving Gaza City. Being displaced is the worst thing that anybody could be through. I've been walking for an hour, two hours. And I'm carrying everything that I can to the south. I'm walking, thousands are walking. I don't have any place to go, I'm, I'm going to, to the unknown. I'm trying to find anywhere to go and nowhere, nowhere to go. No way. And even the way was not was not easy. I and mean, they, they were telling us that it's a safe path to the south. Uh, and they told us that whenever you drop anything, you can't never carry it again, even your children. So if you drop them and you just grab them again, an Israeli sniper could shoot you. Uh, this is the south. Behind me is my beloved city, the north. The, the, soldier were, the, the soldiers were there and on the ground, in front of us, decomposed human bodies and human parts. So this is how we are emptying our tents after being uh, grown. Where am I living now? In a tent. I lived in a tent since the 10th of October 2023. The only thing that changed is the place of the tent. You are not protected from rain, from cold, from wind, any insects. You're just on the ground, on the sand. Can you imagine? This is a bathroom. It's just four meters. The area is four square meters. Now women are suffering because they are physically women. You know, the, the sanitary pads, the, the dignity kits that they need. How are they in need for clean water in their period time? There is no products to use during their periods. Women are shy to tell you this, but the world is not shy to, to let us to death. So women are suffering more than men even. Even if we survive the bombing in, in, in the schools, in the hospitals, in our homes, there is no food, there is no water, there is no clean food, there is no clean water to drink. There is a, a scarcity in the food. So we're trying to make as much as we can uh, food with some benefits for the kids and all these things. In addition to finding some clean water, for the hygiene and washing and even for drinking. At the beginning, we were uh, thinking about and planning um, for our future, thinking about our work. This place was my office and I sit at home for four, three years. It's just destroyed. The priorities changed from being alive and enjoying our lives too, how to survive until tomorrow. So there is a dangerous place and more dangerous places. Okay, so we are trying as much as we can to go to some safe places. These are our priorities now. The internet cut off, uh, the, the cellular connections cut off. People cannot reach to the ambulances to tell them that there is uh, an injury or there are some injuries in a certain place. Before the war, uh, 44,000 people were following me, uh, following my videos talking about Palestine and other acti activities. Now, uh, I think 3.8 million. I don't want to, to, to say influencer, I'm just saying educating people and putting the truth as content is something really that I'm proud of and I'm feeling that I'm, I'm really serving my cause and my people like this. The only political interest for me is being Palestinian. So proud to, to be Palestinian and to work for my society. I aim to uh, change the stereotype about my home country. They all think that the Palestinians are either killed or killing, either wars or destruction all the time. But Gaza is really beautiful. 
The thing is that this did not start in, in 7th of October. It started uh, decades before. A Ghana troop search for Arabs after capturing the city. Women flee with what belonging they can carry. For the Jordanians, the short-lived war is a bitter memory. The strategic situation had changed. Israel now held secure borders. The first intifada was sparked by the deaths of four Palestinians. The second intifada, when Palestinian militants pitted themselves against Israeli troops following the breakdown of peace talks in 2000. Protests in these border areas have been an expression of the sheer desperation felt in Gaza. I just want people all around the world just to understand that Palestinians deserve life. So this girl is alive. If, if anyone knows anybody about her. So I don't feel safe. When, when someone asks me about safety, I don't feel that it's, it's logic, Yanni. How, we, how can we talk about safety in these conditions? We've been recording what is happening in Gaza Strip, telling you that no places are safe, telling you that we've been bombed in the north, in the south, in the schools, in the hospitals, in the roads, in the cars, journalists, doctors, women, men, children, people with disabilities. All people are killed and are targeted, and now people are asking me to go to some safe places. I don't feel safe. I will not be safe until this is end, until we reach a ceasefire. So despite the bombing, the war, the destruction, everything, this sweetie is still in the home and alive. So this is Bissan from Gaza and we're still alive. I'm saying يعني a lot. يعني is an Arabic word that fits in every place and, and it means I mean. So when I say يعني مش هيك, that means I mean not like this. So يعني means I mean. <laughs>